Let's take a look at these equations. These are a little more difficult because nothing clears out and I can't just multiply one of the equations by a number to force that clear out. So let's, let's take a look at this. If I wanted to get rid of the x's, we're going to have to decide what 9 and 12 would have in common. So if you were thinking, you know, like least common multiple or least common denominator, what would both 9 and 12 go into? It'd be 36, wouldn't it? So if we choose to do x, we would have to make both of these turn into 36, one positive and one negative. If we choose to do the y, 3 and 4 have a 12 in common. So we'd have to make sure that one of them was a positive 12 and one was a negative 12. So I'm, I think I'm just going to go with x again, though I could do y, but you know, I like a lot of positive here. So I'm going to have to do both of these equations and force a positive and a negative 36 on both the top and the bottom so I can solve this. All right, so let's do this. I'll just pick, let this one be 4, and that will create a positive 36. And what you do on one side, you have to do on the other. Now, what can I multiply this 12x by to get it to be a negative 36? How about a negative 3? Okay, negative 3 on both sides. Okay, now we're ready to rewrite each one of them and hopefully something's going to clear out, hopefully the x is going to clear out. All right, here we go. I have 4 times 9x is 36x minus 12y equal 12 times 4, which is 48. Okay, that works pretty well. Now let's try this one. Negative 3 times 12 is a negative 36. That's, that's what's happening, is supposed to be happening, that looks good. And a negative times a negative is a positive 12y. And 18 times 3, I don't know, let's see what 18 times 3 is. 24, it looks like a negative 54. So I have a negative 54. Okay, now, my x's did clear out, that's good. But through no fault of our own, that wasn't my plan. It looks like the y's clear out too, positive 12, negative 12. And I'm left with a 48 and a negative 54. Now, I could go ahead and write a number, but it doesn't really matter. I have no x's, I have no y's, and I'm left with some number over here. What do you think the answer is? answer to this one, you've heard it before, is no solution. That is true. So we're finished. There's nothing else to sub in. No solution for these, um, this system of equations. All right, let's look at this other one. Same kind of situation. If we want to get rid of the x's, 4 and 6, what's the smallest number that both 4 and 6 can go into? Don't say 2. 2 goes into both of those. I want to know what number can both of them go into. And I'm thinking probably a 12 here. So, we could do a 12, force x into being 12s, or we could force the 6 and 9 into maybe 18, because 6 and 9 will go into 18. Um, but once again, I do like positive x's. And you may certainly do the y's if you want, but I'm going to do my positive x's. So, I need to turn those x's into a positive 12 and a negative 12. So, I'll just pick 3 for the first one. Doesn't matter which one I pick first. Three on this side, three on this side. That's going to be a positive 12, so I need this to be a negative 12. So what number am I going to use here? Six times what's going to be a negative 12? A negative 2. Negative 2 on this side and a negative 2 on that side. Now, let's rewrite each one and see what happens. 3 times 4x is 12x minus 18y, which will equal 8 times 3 is 24. Now we have a negative 12x, two negatives make a positive, plus 18y will equal a negative 24. Now I'm ready to get rid of my x's and solve for y, but I don't have to, do I? 
Now, this doesn't happen all the time. Don't get used to this. Sometimes you actually get a Y or an X and you have to sub in. It just so happens in this case we didn't. The X's clear out, the Y's clear out, and a positive and a negative 24 clear out. The answer is not zero, and the answer is not no solution. The answer is what? All clear. All real numbers. Any number you choose to put in there will work, okay? Now, the last kind I'm going to show you is I'm going to use some fractions, but it's okay. We're going to turn the fractions into whole numbers, and it'll work just fine. Okay, this is probably the, the top level when it comes to solving uh, through addition elimination. Okay, I'm going to show you 1 half x minus 1 third y is equal to 19 over 6. Now, if you're like many of my students, they give fractions a bad rap. Don't be afraid of fractions. We're going to turn this thing into all whole numbers by simply finding a common denominator. So, but here's the bottom. Let's see, I have a negative 4x plus 5y is equal to a negative 37. All right, now, I can't do anything till I get these into to, to whole numbers. So I have a 2, a 3, and a 6. The common denominator for those is a 6. So I'm going to multiply. If you'll watch this, I'm going to multiply both sides by 6 over 1, and everything's going to turn into a whole number. All right, and whatever it turns into, I'm going to put it right down here. Then we're going to start solving the equation. Okay, look, 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2. 6 over 2 is 3x. So I'll put my 3x right here. Now I have a minus sign. 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 3 is 3. 6 over 3 is a negative 2y. And look at those sixes. Those sixes clear out, leaving us with nothing but 19 over 1, which is 19. Now, that didn't take too much trouble, and we are now ready to make a decision about what we want to do here. If we choose to do the x's, the common number for 4 and 3 will be 12. We need a positive and a negative of each. If we choose to do the y's, 5 and 2 have a 10 in common. So we haven't, we, we haven't been very kind to y, so why don't we do y this time? All right, so we're going to go for a 10. We're looking at the y's. We don't care about the x's. We're looking at the y's. So we can pretty much choose what we want to happen first. If this is a 5 and you want to make it the first one a positive 10, then let's multiply both sides by 2. That will make that 5y a positive 10. Okay, that's a positive 10. Now, this is already a negative 2. So a negative 2 times what? 5 will make a negative 10. So we don't need to make that a negative. All right. Now, how's that looking? Okay, here we go. Whew. Um, I hope this is going to show up on the video, but, but here we go. All right. Negative 8x. plus 10y equal, and a negative 37 times 2. What is that? 37 times 2, 74, a negative 74. And on the bottom, 5 times 3 is a positive 15. 5 times a negative 2 is a negative 10. And 19 times 5 I think that's going to be a 95, okay? All right, now, did the Y's clear out? They sure did. All right, so look what we have left. We have a negative 8 and a positive 15, which is going to be a, the difference is a 7, 7X. And the difference between a 95 and a 74 is a 21, and it's going to be a positive 21, okay? So right now, it looks to me like we are about ready to solve for x. If 7x is 21, 
divide by 7, x will be equal to 3. And if that's the case, all we have to do is go back into one of the original problems using whole numbers and sub in x is 3 to get y. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to erase all this and I'm going to go back into this one and I'm going to let x be 3. Here we go. A negative 4 times 3 plus 5y is equal to a negative 37. Negative 4 times 3 is a negative 12 plus 5y is equal to a negative 37. We need to move the 12 to the other side. So let's do a plus 12. That clears in a plus 12. Now, what does that look like to you? Let me put x up here as 3. That looks like I have a 5y is equal to, now when you take the difference, that looks like it's going to be a 25, but what kind of 25 is it? There's more negative. It's going to be a negative 25. So 5y is equal to a negative 25, and when you divide both sides by 5, y has now been found. 5 into a negative 25 is a negative 5. So the coordinate answer, the ordered pair for this uh, system is 3 comma negative 5. So I took the fraction, I found the common denominator and turned the whole problem into whole numbers and then I had to adapt and make sure what I wanted to get rid of and what I had to do to one or both of the equations to make an x or a y clear out. I'd like to give you one more now and that will be the end of our addition elimination. But this time I'm going to give you two equations and they're both going to be fractions. So we have to set them up first before we ever go into the decide what to get rid of. All right? Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do a one-third x minus one-sixth y equal one. And then down here, I'm going to have a one-half x minus one-fourth y is equal to zero. Okay, now let's turn the top number into whole numbers. We have a three and a six, so the common denominator here is six. Let us multiply both sides, not just one side, by six or six over one. Now, let's see what this turns into. Six over three, because we're multiplying, is two x. And there's a minus sign. And six over six is one y. And one times six is six. So we, we've got whole numbers on that one. Okay, now let's go into this one. The common denominator here is 4. So let's multiply by 4, 4 over 1, and over here by 4. 4 times 1 is 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2x. Put your minus sign. 4 over 4, 4 over top of 4 is 1y. And you know that 0 times any number is still going to be 0. All right, so now we have 2x minus 1y equal 0. So I'm going to get rid of the fractions so we can just look at the whole numbers that we have, and then we'll solve from there. Okay. Okay, this is what we have. Let's move it up a little closer. We have 2x minus 1y equal 0. Okay. Now, I don't see anything disappearing here. I see a 2x and a 2x, but that doesn't clear out because they're both positive. And I see the two negatives, and that doesn't clear out either. So if we wanted to clear out the x, I could multiply by a negative 1, couldn't I? Because if you multiply by a negative 1, it's going to make that 2 a negative 2. I could do that. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by a negative 1. And I'll multiply this by negative 1. So I now have a negative 2x. And a negative times a negative is a 
positive 1y, and over here we have a negative 6. Now, would you look at that? The x's that I wanted cleared out worked beautifully, but x's clear out. Wasn't, wasn't our fault. We just got rid of the x's, and in doing so, we also got rid of the y's. X's are gone, y's are gone, and we're just left right here with a negative 6. You have no variable. You can't solve for the variable because you don't have one. It didn't clear out. If it had cleared out, it would have been all real numbers, right? So what are we going to say here? You're right. No solution. You are correct. You have now completed a couple of lessons on addition elimination, just a different way of solving a system of linear equations.